Hey! Hey! Oh, let's adjust us here. We're a little low. I went live and I didn't tell Craig I was going live. I uh, just pushed the button. I was checking secret. my F1 fantasy team. How'd you do? Let's see. I bet you still got more points than me. I probably I did. picked in my F1 fantasy team, I picked the top four finishers and I nailed it. I got it exactly right. I got 233 points on my team. But I had Williams... One of my constructors picks, team picks, and I had Red Bull as my other one. Well, Williams retired both of their cars in the race, and Red Bull retired one of their cars. Who would have thought? Well, we knew that Williams is going to oh. retire both cars, at least one, for sure. So, for all I... you have fans out there, what's up, everybody? How many did you get? 233. I stayed in third place. I'm third place in our league. Yeah. All right. Out of 20 teams. I'm in third place. fifth place and sixth place and... Um... Well, it's there's, been a rough season. There's only 41 points between first place and third place. So. Oh, wait. I got to go back to look at the total. Uh, completed. Japan. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you get 234? 40, or Evan just said that Perez logged a 43-minute lap time. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Because he was in that the was pit forever. Um, that's horrible. For picking the top, like guys yeah it just shows you the constructors is actually worth more points than the people. for those of you who have no clue what we're talking about oh, we're sorry i'm sorry yeah welcome to uh the quarterly worldwide live stream we do this every week by the way every oh yeah i forgot Monday. this is for everybody this is for everybody <laughs> i totally forgot <laughs> hey everybody that's everybody. not normally here yeah. There's a lot of activity over yeah. there. Uh, yeah, we do this every single Monday for our patrons. So if you want to be a part of this every Monday, it's cool. It's a tight-knit community, and we hang out, and we talk, and you guys ask questions, and we just kind of BS for an hour. Exactly. Um, talk about whatever. So if you have any questions, put them over there. Craig will be monitoring the questions over here. We'll answer them in rapid fire. And we'll do uh, a wet stuff of the week. We do a wet stuff of the week every Monday uh, when we pick uh, an interesting wet stuff. Last we week was ranch drink dressing. It. Last week, well, it was ranch dressing, and, and it was that master distill master uh, distiller uh, Saint Augustine. Augustine, yeah. <clears throat> um, which one of our patrons sent us? And this morning, ho ho, we won't get to it quite yet. But I got a really fancy whiskey for you nothing says so, monday morning at 9 30 like a nice glass ooh, of whiskey. nice glass of whiskey it's not always whiskey it's not sometimes it's ranch <laughs> yeah um it's funny because a week ago i told craig i said i have two weeks until i go on my elk hunting trip which i go on every year Oh, which is probably the most physical activity i do all year long because it's really hard um and i said i'm not going to drink the next two weeks and i'm gonna like really hit the gym hard and get in shape i've been hitting the gym i've been doing good there um i did slip up yesterday we were up in portland with the fam and they oh, wanted to no. go to the shoots brewery for dinner and you can't go to a brewery for dinner you can't and go to the shoots not have a beer i just noticed that when you shaved there's one mustache hair you, get you it. missed get it get it oh it's so long and gross I can't get it. I'm not do doing it. it. You do it later. No, can't do it. Thanks um, for pointing out my flaws. Yeah, I like it though. To everybody. Okay, well, I'll keep Craig it. Craig shaved. I'm by just going to maybe get. I'm Anyways, gonna, I'm I had go. one beer yesterday. It's not going to kill me. Fine. And I'm also going to have a little sip of whiskey this morning, but that's part of the thing. Okay. But then I'm not going to drink again <laughs> until lunch. lunchtime. I meet up with my buddy in Montana right before the hunt. There you go. Because you should uh, always drink right before you go hunting. Where are you going hunting? Tell us a little bit about the hunt. Um, this year, I've switched it up. I've always hunted in Oregon or Arizona when I used to live in Arizona. Um, this year, we decided to do something different. We're going to Montana, just outside of Butte. Uh, this is a little bit of a schwanky trip by my standards because we're going with a guide service. And they're going to put us in a wall tent. So you're trying to find your hair. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'll take a picture of it for you in a second. They're gonna they put up wall tents for us, they cook meals for us, they got like stoves so you're not cold and everything. So it'll be interesting. Bow are hunt. Gonna, are you gonna get one? Turn that way. Dude, it's not gonna oh wait there. That's a good picture. Okay. See? Oh yeah, let's show everybody. No, we don't need to do that. 
let's keep our bodily stuff to ourselves. Okay. Uh, is it pretty much like one of these hunting trips where it's guaranteed? Like no, nothing's guaranteed. I it's guess it's not. It's not a guide. Like there are hunts like that. They're usually in private land where they have a herd that stays on the land, and you go out and you just kind of like pick your bowl and you shoot it. Uh, this is still a public land hunt, so okay. You are with a guide who's done a lot of scouting, but there's definitely no guarantees. Bow hunting's hard, really hard. So we'll see what happens. I shot a bow once in my life. Usually this turns into a just me hiking 10 miles a day for a week straight <laughs> and looking at scenery. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah, it's yeah. fun. So it'll be nice to get away. It'll be good. Yeah. What do you, uh, oh, so you're just going to leave me here at the shop? Oh, so while I'm gone, because we don't want to leave you without a video, uh, Craig is going to build a project and film the whole thing and edit the whole video. And then I, let, let me preface this by saying Craig has never built a piece of furniture before. Ever. I just started feeling kind of sick um, just now. He's never built anything. No. So Craig's going to. I've never built any. Well, I mean, I've done like housework, house construction. Yeah, but you've never built a piece of furniture. No. So he's going to build something. I don't know what it is yet. Um, I'm going to leave. He's going to do it all, design it. He's going to build it. He's going to edit the video. He's not going to voice over the video. When I get back, I'm going to sit down and voice over the video as I watch it for the first time, having never seen the piece he's making or what he's building. It's just going to be like a commentary on the build in real time. And I'm not going to hold back no. if I see him doing but something wrong. What I need you guys to do is get my back and support me and don't rip me apart too much. Hey, I have full confidence in Craig. He hasn't built anything, but he's seen me build a lot. What if things. I build it to the point where it just needs sanded and I wait for you to get back? Well, I was just going to say, at least we know that the sanding will be on point. I'll just say you broke into my house while I was gone. But yeah, but my wife and kid will be home, so oh. you can't break in. <laughs> Darn it. Okay. All right. Do we hey, have some questions? We do have questions this morning. Okay. Brandon Dickinson. He's one of our patrons. Hey, Brandon. Are you guys doing anything for your 10-year anniversary of Bourbon Moth? I don't even know when that is. When is that? 2014? I think it would be... Is it next year? I think it would be next year. Ten hey, years. 10 years. Congratulations um, let's on see. your 10-year. No... It might be 2025. I always know how old Bourbon Moth is because of how old my son is. Because I started pretty much around the time he was born. Uh, and he was born in 2015. But no, I would have been started in 2014. So yeah, it'd be 2024. It'd be 10 years. I don't know. Should We We should do something we fun. We should do something fun. Yeah. Okay. Let's do something fun. Okay. So every week over on Patreon, we do a build of the week. Like we're a, one of our patrons can submit a build. And a couple of weeks ago, we showcased this really awesome table that was all tons of little triangles glued up into a circle. And Mr. Jason over here said, oh, it should be fine. And I said, well, what about like wood movement? Is this going to split or anything like that? And I just got an update on this table. Ron, you're a champ for putting this out there. The table split. Oh, see? The table split. All right. Well, back to the drawing board. So what Ron did was he cut. It was actually a beautiful process. It was beautiful. I'll he try to pull up the picture. He did a little video on the whole thing. Is there any way people can watch that video? Did he post it uh, No. It's, well, actually, yeah, Ron, Ron, if you're on here, you can chime in in the comment section. Like, Put I, a link it's on in the YouTube. comment section. Yeah. Um, can you put links in the comment section? I don't know. Anyways, he cut all these little wedges and he did the math to figure out how many he needed for the right degrees and all the wedges went together like slices of pizza and they glued around and he made a round table out of the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And there was questions of like, will this, because wood movement, and we didn't know. I said, who knows? Let's see what happens. Um, but I also said that lots of times when people do that style table, it's not full thick pieces that they do. It's thin, almost a veneer on top of like yeah. some sort of substrate. So here's the top. It's beautiful. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. But it ended up splitting. So maybe we've learned something as a group that community. If learning. you're gonna have wood going in that many, you know, directions around a central point, maybe thinner pieces glued on a substrate would be the way to go. Okay. Question coming in from Mark Litchfield. 
Have you ever used mail order wood? Um, Such as like from Woodcraft. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I did order wood online one time. When I first started woodworking, I was making a lot of pipes uh, just for fun tobacco pipes and the funny thing is i don't even really like smoking tobacco pipes they're just fun i did do a video on how to make one somewhere back in the archives that was my first ever bourbon moth project before bourbon moth was a thing oh yeah you came out i came out back when this was a single car garage shop and i made a pipe yeah it was fun uh i always had the shop open and people would come out and it was easy to make you can make a pipe in a night Mm -hmm. so it was just a fun little project so i used to order a lot of wood online for those uh blocks of briar or some other exotic woods but i've never ordered like i don't know dimensional lumber for building a project online okay so you wouldn't have but i know a lot of people do the one thing i would recommend is depending on where you're ordering it from and where it's being shipped from and where you live all that when you get the wood put it in your shop let it acclimate in your shop for a few days before you do anything with it because who knows what the moisture content is on where it's being shipped from and to. That would be my only concern. Okay. Believe it or not, I'm not the first employee of Bourbon Moth. That's working. true. Yep. Yeah. You had another guy once. Fantine I've would like to know. I've had two other employees oh, for yeah. Bourbon Moth Woodworking. I've actually, the first employee for Bourbon Moth Woodworking was a girl. Her name was Tawny. She was great. Um, she worked half for Bourbon Moth and half for my wife on her printing business. And so she kind of split the yeah. two. And so she did a little, uh, she did a lot of uh, staining of things for me. At that time, I was doing a lot of small items. And, anyways. Yeah. And then Nathan worked for me. Okay. And then you. And then me. Okay. So who's the best? Oh, y- I you. I just can't. I, yeah, no, that wasn't the question. No, you actually. are. You really are. Um, Fantine would like to know this is back when you did commission work. So building tables for people. Did you have him just do certain activities? What are your thoughts on having someone pros, cons to help you out? Mm-hmm. in the shop mm-hmm. and i can plug mm-hmm. my ears if you'd like me to plug my ears yeah when i was doing client work it was difficult because i wasn't doing a line of furniture it's not like we we're ever doing the same thing twice so every week it was something brand new which means that i had to design something kind of as i built it which made it almost impossible to have an employee that actually built things for me because i would have had to have an employee that was an excellent woodworker to the point that I could have been like, here's a drawing, design it, go build it, which people you could find it's just hard because most people that have that skill set, they just do it themselves instead of working for somebody else getting paid a lot less. So when I had an employee, it was like they would do a lot of the emailing back and forth, following up with clients. They would do a lot of the sanding, finishing work because that's you know easy to teach on a repeatable level cleaning the shop, making sure everything's stocked, um, making sure they were good at like procuring items. So making sure we had enough material on hand to build what we needed to build, that sort of thing. I never had an employee that was like a full builder. Okay. But a lot of people do. I just didn't. Um, There's two questions on here. I'm going to combine them into one. (laughs) How did you get your start? And then the other one is, are you self-taught or did you have some teacher guru? Where'd you, um, where'd you come from in the woodworking world? Where did it come from? Where did it go? I got my start the same way 90% of all other woodworkers get their start. I wanted stuff for my house and I thought, oh, I could build this cheaper than I could buy it, which is false because you got to buy tools and trial and error. And anyways, it's way more expensive to build yourself stuff than just buy it. So I started playing around with it as a hobby. I've never had any professional training. Um, I mean, I say that, but let's be honest, YouTube's pretty professional training. Uh, I learned from YouTube, lots and lots of YouTube videos. You can learn anything you want on YouTube. For example, uh, one of the videos we've got coming out in a couple weeks is this last week I spent building a cider press because we have a bunch of apple trees on the property and I wanted to be able to make cider. And I decided I bought all this uh, cast hardware for the cider press. And there's like a grinder that you have to turn like this and it grinds the apples into one bucket. And then you scoot that forward and then there's a press. And I got it all hooked up. And the grinding wheel, I was like, this is going to take forever because you got to grind and grind. So I had this little electric motor sitting around and I decided to retrofit the motor onto the grinding part and take the wheel off. But the motor I had was running in the wrong direction. So 
I don't know anything about motors <laughs> or electricity, but I got on YouTube and in a matter of seven minutes after watching a video, I rewired the motor and I got it to run in reverse. And I felt very accomplished. But YouTube, man, you can YouTube. learn anything you want on there. Yeah. So keep watching my videos. <laughs> Speaking of YouTube, Mark Hendricks just asked, why do you believe that the Bourbon Mouth channel has become so successful? You guys, you guys are so flipping cool. Um, I feel very, very blessed. Everyone's like, what do you think it is? Um, honestly, glory be to God, seriously. Uh, for whatever reason, he really chose to bless me and my family and grow the channel. I think that's really cool. I also think that one of our main goals is, yes, we want to teach you guys stuff. We want to show the process and the things we do. But we also just want to have a fun channel that's entertaining and easy to watch. And so we try and make it fun. I think that's probably got something to do with it as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'd agree. hundred percent. And Craig, Craig's pretty easy to look at. So uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> actually look kind of creepy. Well, just there with the smile, not in general, not in general, just when you're like, Hey, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, Okay, someone's making a workbench top out of MDF. Best surface for oh, that thing. For mica, mica, laminate. Absolutely. It doesn't have to be for mica brand, although they've been really nice to us in the past, so I'll say for mica is awesome. I will also say, I just did a project uh, for our church. They needed a sound booth, and I helped them out, and I built a little countertop. And I got an off-brand from Formica, black laminate, and put it on there. And that, I did not like that stuff. Whatever brand that was, it was very brittle, and it was it snapped really easy if you weren't careful. Um, so for Micah, it's great. It's easy to apply. We got a couple different videos showing that process. The most recent one would be our last Patreon winner, uh, Sean McDonald. We built him a miter station. miter station. I wanted to say outfeed table, and we put a laminate top on his. Now, if you go watch that video, the laminate we worked with for Micah, they did a custom job on that laminate. And the funny part with that was when we asked Sean what color you want, <laughs> I was like, dude, we can get any color you want, like anything. And he's like, I don't care. Oh, Sean's yeah. on here, too. This is there probably is. his biggest regret in his life. He's yeah. like, I don't care what color. Get whatever you want. And he I was says like, he has a slightly used for Micah he can sell. I was like, are you sure <laughs> you don't care? He's like, I could not care any less. So we worked with Formica and we had a custom thing printed with my yeah. face yeah. all over it, which is now forever on his miter saw station. So go watch that video. Nice. And it's a good time to say, if you're not signed up on Patreon and you want a chance to win our contest like Sean did, go sign up and I'll come build a project with you. Nice. If you win. Uh, we're going to be traveling to Georgia. Oh yeah, we just picked our next November. winner. We're going to Georgia this, November. This. Yeah, we do two a year. Uh, Gregory Atwell, cool guy, had met him previously at Workbench Con. That did not affect his winning. The drawing was random. Um, this is actually the first winner ever that I knew I had met before. Yeah, previous. Yeah. Met um, at Workbench last year. Yeah, the right? previous yeah. year. Uh, anyways, we're going to build a project at his humble abode. Speaking of Workbench. Marietta, Georgia. M Michael Builds will be there in 2024. Wants to know if we will be there. Oh, we Absolutely. will be there. All right. We'll yeah. be there. Come say hey. If they allow us back. Things got a little crazy last time. Two years ago it did. Was it two years ago? You talking about the scissor lift? Uh, well, it's like the scissor lift, yeah, but then there was the fire. Anyways, were you there for the fire? No. Okay, never mind. Nothing happened. What fire? What? I'll tell you later. Okay. Wow. All right. Are you seeing basic three-quarter inch birch ply prices? Of ninety dollars a sheet out west too. Yep. Wow. Do yep. you see any relief in the future, dude? It's hard. Companies, right? They want to make money. Imagine that. And once they raise prices and they don't see a decline in their sales, they get comfortable with those prices. So it's really hard for them to come back down. Um. So I don't know. I mean, look at the country as a whole. Inflation's crazy right now. So. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't count on it anytime soon. That's all I have to say about that. Okay. Hey, we're at our 20 minute mark, which means it's time for. What is it time for? It's time for lunch. 
No, it's time for what stuff of the oh, week. Oh, what stuff of the week? All right. And and I don't. I just made up the twenty minute mark. We've never done this. No, right we've at never minutes. done it at twenty minutes. Yeah, but it seems like a nice time to do it. Uh, this what stuff of the week? Uh, we like to just go into the liquor store and buy things we haven't tried before. Now, I am a huge fan of Old Granddad bottled in bond i think for the price you can't find a better whiskey at that price point under 20 dollars. it used to be at least under 20 dollars bottle it's great and so i figured if i like old granddad <laughs> then we better try old oh. overholtz which i've never had before but you know it's good because it's got a plastic twist off not just any twist off a red twist Ooh, off and it's been aged for Four whole years. Wow. Let's see. Uh, it is made in Kentucky, but it was born in Pennsylvania. non chill filtered. 43% alcohol. So it's not that strong. Only 86 proof. So, so did they just source the base spirit from Pennsylvania? Then they well, I'm guessing took it, it to started, their distillery. If you go back in the history of Old Overholt. Oh, probably started. started in Pennsylvania. Not like that bottle. And then a lot of distilleries God. moved to Kentucky for uh, legal reasons, um, <laughs> bonding issues, and that's why Kentucky and lots of places. Anyways, we mm -hmm. won't get into that whole thing. Mm -hmm. But smells very uh, yeasty. Twisty, twist offy. Mm. It's a rye, I should say that. Sm doesn't it smell like a pizza dough. Oh, it does. Very yeasty. Yeah. Which I like a yeasty rye. Kind of almost beerish a yeah, little bit. Almost. Yeah. Let's have a sip. Tell you what we think. If you would like to pick up a bottle, I guarantee this is less than $20. Um, and guarantee, there it is. huh? Yeah. It ah. has to be. You ain't buying no bottle of whiskey for over 20 bucks with a plastic screw top. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Here we go. The yeasty beastie. It's not the worst whiskey I've ever had. No. Tastes like a Jim Bean. Like a Jim Bean rye. It's not like... Whew. Burns a little going down. Yep. <clears throat> and you know if it's only 43% and it burns going down, it's quality. It's a twisty. <laughs> Yeah, it's a twisty. <laughs> All right. So if you would okay. like to try that, I have a bottle. I'll sell you cheap. <laughs> okay. Anti Johannes, would you build or would you use MDF or plywood for cabinets for a bathroom that are going to be painted? Uh, for the carcasses or for the doors? Uh, I never like building carcasses out of MDF. It's just me. Um, it's just hard. The joinery is a little harder. If you're going to try and put fasteners in MDF, it doesn't want to hold as well. Um, but for doors, you'd be totally fine because yes, people are like MDF, water, moisture, blah, 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 but that's only if the moisture can get to the MDF. And if you encase it in layers of primer and paint, then the liquid's not getting in there. So I think that would be a okay. Nice. Bronco man, one, three, eight, seven just became a, I want to touch your beard patron. Member, that's pretty good. That's the twenty-five dollar a month. Go ahead, reach your hand out to reach your screen. Me. Your own. If I do that, do I have to pay you? Yeah, do you, have you to, do. I do have to pay you. Darn it! Has anybody actually touched your beer from Patreon? That's um, the question. Maybe. Maybe. Possibly. Okay. Yeah. All right. I can't remember who asked it, but uh, also a cabinet question. They're okay. building cabinet doors for their kitchen okay can be painted all right what wood would you recommend for kitchens i usually for kitchens like to use a uh, hard maple rock maple eastern white maple whatever you want to call it um it's just more durable maple paints fantastic and it's very hardy you got to be a little careful when you're working with maple um it likes to chip and split a little easier than some other woods because it is so hard um, but don't let that deter you. You just got to keep that in mind. So always, you know, have like a waste board. If you're cutting a dado on the backside uh, or if you're drilling holes through it, have something underneath it. Uh, Pre-drill if you're using any fasteners, stuff like that. But I would go with maple. It's for the price, not crazy expensive. Uh, and yeah, works really well. Nice. We just, I was working with maple all week long building that cider press. 
Yeah. It's entirely made of maple. <clears throat> Since I had been... Just funny, I should have found somebody who milled up apple wood and made it out of an apple tree. Oh my gosh, that's kind of like cannibalistic though. I wonder if anybody uses apple trees to build anything. I don't know. Probably turners. I bet people turn bowls at apple trees. Yep. Sounds yeah. like a thing. Sure. Um, this comes up every single time, and I think it's a funny story. But what's up with the Harbor Freight table saw? Uh, well, Harbor Freight. <laughs> they make good things when they make them, and they you know don't want they to. Okay, here's the thing. Let's get into this again. <laughs> Let me tell you a little secret. All right. It's not really a Harbor Freight. What? Yeah. I know. I just put that stick. I put a piece of tape on it and I wrote that on there. It's actually a Grizzly. Okay. I thought you were going to say yeah. something else. Yep. Uh, no, it's a flipping saw stop. All right. I had this tiff with saw stop a while ago and it basically went like this. And you can be the judge of whether or not I'm just being bitter. Uh, I bought that table saw, full price, my own money. Didn't talk to Saw Stop at all about it. Had no relation with Saw Stop whatsoever. I just wanted one because I thought the safety features were cool. And I got online and I bought it. Okay. It was almost six grand for the entire thing with the outfeed table and the extensions, all that. It's a lot of money. But I was willing to pay that because I think it's a quality saw. I still think it's a quality saw. I bought the saw. No less than a week after I buy the saw. Saw Stop reaches out to me on their own. I had nothing to do with this. And they said, hey, we would love to send you a saw in exchange for it being featured on your channel and videos and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's really cool. Thank you. I actually just bought a saw full price. So if you want, just refund me the cost. And then I would be happy for it to be, you know, a feature on the channel. I was totally, that was really cool of them. I was like, yay. They send me an email back. And I kid you not, <laughs> this is what they said. They said, oh, well, since you already bought one, it's going to be on the channel anyways. We don't really feel the need to spend the money. Take care. That's what they said. Don't you think that's kind of a jerk move? They were literally just going to give me a saw. All I said was, hey, can Offers I get a refund? Table. I didn't reach out to them. They reached out to me. So then they were like, well, it's going to be on there anyways. We're going to get free exposure. And I was like, <laughs> no, you won't. No, you won't. <laughs> Given all the exposure to Harbor Freight, you jerks. So anyways, yeah, that's what happened. You okay, there's two lessons here. Patience for one. Mm -hmm. If you're, You think I should have just waited? I think you should have waited one more week. But the thing was, I was happy to buy the saw. It was fine. Two, you should have just taken it said awesome sweet i'll take it in hindsight that's what i should have done i should have said yeah. great send me a saw and then i should have yeah. sold it yep or because yeah. they have data of yeah stack but things, it's a, right i mean i guess i could have had one as a data designated yeah. data all right i should have taken the saw it's my yeah. fault Ugh, that was before i worked for you so, so you would have told me i would have said absolutely saw. take it i just hey, thought yeah. that was really mean yeah at the time i was like oh this is sweet i'll get six thousand yeah. dollars back dang not J-S-X-C-7-0. It's a good name. Come up with a real name. That is a good name. I like that. I don't like that name. It's probably his it's internet password. It sounds like his motorcycle. Hey, but anyway, he's from the UK. What's up, J-S-X? Do you own any antique woodworking tools? I do. Hold on. I'll get one. Um, I only own one, actually. Okay. One. Is this one? This is a original Stanley number eighty cabinet scraper. Uh, so basically, you guys are familiar with card scrapers, uh, where you get a little burr on there and you hold them in your hand and you scrape, which are great. Uh, I use card scrapers a lot for cleaning up like uh, corners with glue seams and stuff, things like that. They're really good for refinishing if you have to scrape all the finish off of an old piece. Problem with card scrapers is if you have to use them for a long time. Uh, the friction builds up a lot of heat in the card scraper and they get really hot and hard to hold on to. So some people will put like a refrigerator magnet on there or some foam tape, something like that. But the uh, Stanley cabinet scraper, it's basically just a holder for a card scraper. I mean, that's pretty much what it is. You get a burr on this, which is a little thicker than a normal card scraper. And it goes in there and you... 
Anyways, I okay. thought it was cool. I bought this. This is the only tool I've ever bought on eBay because they make reproductions of these, but apparently they're not as good. But this is an originally original Stanley one. So sweet. Hey, we got Green Tizen from Indonesia. It's midnight there. Hey, this thanks for tuning made in. Made in New Britain, Connecticut. Okay. Admir would like to know. He says the treehouse looks awesome. Thanks, man. How long was the total build and estimated all in? How much do oh, you think that thing cost? Boy. Um, well, much. what did it take us? <laughs> About a year. Yeah. Total I think start to finish. To do, and we're not done. We still want to do the whole interior, believe it we or not. We did take about a four month hiatus. Yeah. Winter set in yeah. right when we were getting the roof on and it got nasty. Mm -hmm. um, so probably took us a year total of building, not straight, like Craig said. How much did we spend? <laughs> I would say it's over 30 and under 40. You don't think so? You think I it's think over it's, 40? I think it's 45. Okay. Craig it's thinks it's over done. 40. I mean, you got to think there's a lot of materials in there. And so we, much material. we built it like a house. So we didn't really spare any expense on materials. We used LP lap siding, which isn't cheap. We used all cedar trim around the outside. I mean, the window package, we used good Jeldwin windows. The metal roof wasn't cheap. All the pressure treated lumber for the lower, you know, support system. We had to pay for concrete, um, equipment rental. Every time we rented that scissor lift for a week, it was like seven, eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, it all adds up so fast. Bark chips. We probably spent two thousand dollars just in the bark chips around mm -hmm. the base because mm -hmm. we got two loads of those um railroad like ties in railroad ties yeah bridge yeah. materials we had to get custom steel fabricated <clears> for the <throat> bridge supports we did the railings were all those metal railings which are cool but they're not cheap so yeah you're probably right probably 40 plus if greg is pronounced greg why is craig not craig like the rest of the world that's a good question. It, it is funny. Sense, Everybody right? in other countries, they do think your name is funny. I know. There are so many people that from other countries that can't pronounce my name. Craig. Craig. Mm. Or it's a Craig. Craig. Get Craig a lot. Yeah, Craig. My nephew would always call me Cake. Mm. Uncle Cake. Reluctantly Golf question from JM. At the starting I like line. this. Engines. Thumping, I really like this question. In time. It's a golf question. You can read it. It's from JM. Where is it? Right JM, what drives the ball farther? Who? Oh. And how far do you guys drive the ball? Craig flipping crushes the ball. I don't know. What's your like a, a long drive for you? Well, it used to be 330, 335. That's pretty far. Now that I'm 40 years old almost, it's uh 290, 295. I'll say when I absolutely everything happens correctly. We're, we're even on that. When I, we both hit it. Hard. I would say when everything happens correctly and I hit it straight the way I want to, I can hit it like 285, 290. I maybe like once, twice in my life have hit it over 300 if it's like summertime and the ground's hard. and <laughs> Downhill, <laughs> downwind. It's downhill. <laughs> um, okay. Um, if you straightened my drive out then it would go a lot well, farther. Well, yeah, I guess if you, <laughs> you might hit it, yours might travel like, farther. Like I bet that. yours travels farther. Yeah, yours goes in a straight line. Mine has this nice, yeah, to it. yeah. So. Um, okay, I can't remember whose name it was, but they asked a boat question. They said, you've inspired them to build a boat. Mm, cool. Quick, I don't know, top three tips that you learned while building your boats um don't rush anything because you'd rather take your time in your shop than be out on the water and say man i wish i would have taken my time <laughs> <laughs> so go slow make sure you do it right um let's see total boat this isn't a sponsor plug but they have so many great products and they the cool thing about total boat is everybody that works there seems pretty proficient in boating and so there were so many times that I had questions and I'd call Total Boat and I would ask their customer service and they always knew the answer. Or they'd be like, I don't know, let me get Jake. He's a, sailed around the world three times. He'll answer it for you. And they would answer questions. So they're great uh, at Total Boat. 
uh, don't skimp on material quality. Obviously, there's certain woods that do great on water, and there's certain woods that don't. So do a little research on that. Um, but yeah, have fun, man. Boats are great. We're actually, can I tell them? That we're going to kind of be building another boat here? Don't give it all away. I won't tell you at all about it, but we're going to be building another boat here in the next week or so. And I'm really excited about it because it's going to be awesome. <laughs> it's going to be great. Yeah. Might be my favorite boat build yet. And we haven't even built it yet, so it's going to be no. fun. Got to finish that cider press first. Yeah. Um, okay, press Christopher wants to know if each of our beards were a sandpaper grit, what grit are we talking? Mm. The thing about... Oh, I'd say yours would be like 120 and mine would be like 400. Yeah. See, the thing about beards that are opposite of sandpaper is the more material, the softer mm -hmm. it is, right? Yeah. But even when mine's short, I feel I like just it's shaved pretty this, soft. I just trimmed down this morning. Yeah, mine, was, mine was fairly full. And I shaved recently, the too. One, mine was a lot longer. I trimmed the it down The one that I missed. This is about there as short is. as I go, though. Did you get it? Oh. Got it. Keep that away from my whiskey glass. <laughs> Okay, um, we do have a actual tiny little sponsor spot that is hopefully good for you guys. If you look down in the description, Isotunes was gracious enough. I told them we we're doing a live stream today. Oh, sweet. We love our Isotunes here. They are a uh, sponsor of ours, but I reached out to them and I... Is this the Isotunes theme song? Okay, keep it going. Reached out to them and I said, hey, we're going to be doing a public live stream for everybody. Is there a deal you can throw their way? And they said, absolutely. So starting today through Saturday, you get 15% off everything. That's 5% more than our discount code. There's a link down there. Click it and you'll get 15% off. So if you've been holding out, uh, waiting to get some isotunes at a good deal, this is a pretty good sale. So that's all I really have to say about that. But uh, if you want to tag anything onto that. You like um, isotunes always gets mad at me. Because they say I wear their isotunes upside down. Are these, these are mine? Yours, those are yours. I won't so put them apparently, in you're supposed to put them in like this. Up. Yeah, like every like, normal person ever. Um, and I always think it's more comfortable like that. But why? Because if you look at it, it's the I same. I don't know. I just shove them in there and it feels good. All right? I feel That's like what she said. You're... Sorry, everybody. Um... <laughs> I feel like you're... <laughs> A creature of habit, though. I feel like you, you do Anyways, something once you like it. And you it, would and think gonna... that I would try and please the sponsor and be like, okay, I'll wear them the right way. But yeah, I you... refuse to do it. I tell Isotunes I can wear them any flipping way I want. And my one word of advice to you is you can wear them any way you want to. So. You just have to have one. You just, you have, just have to have, have one. one. But, so, yep. They still work just fine. Go get some down. if you want. Yep. Um, okay. Airstream. Let's give a little update because I do Ooh. looking at the board, our billboard. I know when there, are we gonna finish? It that? seems like it's gonna be a while. A while. So let's let some people know. know. People are gonna be mad about that. Because you go like a week without putting out the airstream, and they're like, "Where's the airstream?" Hey, I just want to say I really appreciate all of you guys. The amount of attention that the airstream has got. I just realized this last video we put out was the eleventh video that we've put out on the airstream. 11. It's funny because in our initial conversations, we're like, yeah, we could probably get seven, maybe eight tops. Yeah, and we're on 11 and it's not done. And the fact that you guys are still watching blows my mind. So seriously, thank you so much. Um, we're so close to having that thing done. We have one bank of cabinets to build in the bathroom for the sink and the countertop and storage in there. We have the floor. And then I have to take it back over to Bend. They're the ones that did all the initial body work and everything because they're going to do the upholstery for the wraparound seat. And they're going to do some final electrical plumbing things, little tweaks. They're going to add a couple batteries. Since we decided to switch from a propane fridge to an electric fridge, we got to add a few more batteries for the solar bank. Anyways, I don't know how long they're going to have it. I don't know if we're going to get another video out on it before it goes over there. So we might have to do a video just saying like, there's not going to be a video for a while. But then when we get it back, the final video will be like the last few little tweaks and a tour of the entire thing. And then maybe me and Craig will take it on a trip somewhere. Camping trip. Yeah. yeah. That's right. We'd have to bring somebody that knows how to uh, do a RV. little RV camping. Yeah, We'll bring Jeff. Trailer. He knows. Yeah. Yeah, our friend our Jeff, Jeff is a, he's a habitual RVer. 
Um, is that the right word? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Habitual RVing. I don't know anything about RVing. I don't know how to hook up the poop chute or... Uh, somebody asked about the shower. There's no indoor shower. It's outdoor shower. Mm -hmm. So Got a lot of flack for that at the beginning. A lot of you guys were like, huge mistake. Big regret. You're going to want an indoor shower. Let me just say, I've never slept in an RV in my entire life. I always just go camp in the woods, and I don't shower for a week straight when I'm out there. So the fact that I'm upgrading to having an outdoor shower versus no shower is going to be huge. And I don't care what you say. I didn't want to take up room in the RV and have a shower in there. Yeah. So take that <laughs> and deal with it. Um, Lewis B. Have you ever combined steam bent wood and resin before? Does resin have any impact on the shape of the wood? Um, Lego man. It should not have any impact of the shape of the wood. You mean like, is the resin going to get the wood wet and then it's going to bend it more? No, it won't. Resin is thick enough that it doesn't penetrate the wood like water does. It just doesn't, it doesn't react the same way. So I think you should be totally fine. Mm -hmm. If you bend a piece of wood and then cover it in resin, I think it'll stay bent the way that you want. Okay. I don't have a ton of experience with that. Um, I've only done steam bending one time and it wasn't even real steam bending it was for the lego man um i bent the hands correction minifig sorry we Mini, don't want we don't want to it's minifig. 2023 we don't say lego man um anymore. and it wasn't even like true steam bending i just boiled a pot of water and stuck little strips in the boiling water and then pulled them out and bent them which it's the same thing but it wasn't like a steam box yeah okay uh question over on patreon shop size you had a smaller shop before. Mm -hmm. So what made you expand and what is the current square footage of the shop today? Current square footage of the shop. I think it's just under 1,600 square feet. It's like, I don't even want to guess on the dimensions because then you're going to be like, that's not 1,600, but <laughs> it's probably because I got it wrong. I want to say it's like 28 by 70. I don't know. I don't know. That's probably not anywhere close. Do you want me to measure real quick? No, it's or, okay. No? okay. Um, I know I've measured it before. I know it's like 1590 or something. So what made you go bigger? Go well, bigger. We had the space on hand and I could. And so I did. I mean, the shop I had before was tiny. I was able to fit like a table saw and a chop saw and all that stuff in there. Um, I didn't really have room for a joiner or a planer, so I wanted to be able to have room for like a big joiner and planer. And I didn't have any big area that I could just use for assembly, which lots of people forget that when they're laying out their shop. They make sure they fit all the tools in there and they get like a work table, but they don't have any floor space left over if they need to assemble a big piece of furniture, which can kind of be a pain because where do you assemble those pieces? And then once you do, can you walk around in your shop? Go look at Keith Johnson, though. His shop is tiny, and he built some cute yeah. stuff. I don't get how he does it. Well, I do, because I went and built something there. Well, no, it's because he's so freaking skinny. Well, that's part of it, yeah. but he also assembles everything in his dining room. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah, so, well, but apparently they don't cook, so. Yeah. But this next year, I determined last night, I was laying in bed, and I was like, we are doing this this next year, come hell or high water. Um, we're expanding the shop again. Behind this wall is another 1,200 square feet. It's going away. About, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not being used. So we're going to tear this wall down and we're going to make the shop. It'll be If the shop's really not big. big enough, knock it down. Yeah. Knock the walls down. I know. I have this weird building that <laughs> there's just more space behind every wall. So... <laughs> <laughs> But we're gonna do that next year. But I'm we want to revamp the entire shop. To like, I find like the other room that you're hiding somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Circuit. Hi, Phoebe. Very important. Oh, no. Phoenix. Phoenix threat. Sorry, from back here. I thought it said Phoebe. I thought it said Phoenix treat. Oh. But it's threat. That was just completely different. Phoenix threat. Uh, Circuit's got an important question. Who? Circuit. Circuit. Circuit S. Period. I wonder what size he is. You know what circuit size? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, what's the question? 
Which one is a better tool? Festu fe Festool? Festool? Festool Domino or the Lamello from Lamello? Oh, you can't compare them. They're two completely different. Because really? I think that's a miscommon or yeah. misunderstanding. You can't, you can't have one or the other. Even though um, they look the same. You're so never going to use the Lamello for structural tenon joinery. That's just not what it does. It's really good for assembling. It's good for situations like a waterfall edge where you can't clamp it because it's like a weird angle and you want to you know, clip things together. It's good for alignment. It does not have the strength that a through tenon or a um, integral tenon that a domino is going to give you. It just doesn't. Okay, Lamella would tell you that too. It's not like this competition thing. So if you want something for building furniture um, and giving strength to a piece, get the domino joiner, hands down. Okay. If you're a cabinet maker and you want an easy way for, you know, fastenerless attachment of face frames or hooking boxes together quick and easy, then the Lamella is great for that too. All right. Let's talk wood. Uh, <laughs> Woodworking YouTube for a minute. Uh, say somebody is a hobbyist woodworker, but is starting a channel. What tips would you get them? Give them starting out on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. Um, I would say if you're going to start a YouTube channel, don't make a video, post it to YouTube, and then wait months, and then post another video, and then wait a couple weeks, and then post another video. Consistency is probably the most important thing you can do when it comes to YouTube. Um, and I wouldn't post a video on YouTube in hindsight. This isn't what I did, but looking back now, I wouldn't post a video on YouTube until you have like three to five videos already made. And then I would post all of those at once to start your channel. And then I would, um, like start posting consistently, like one every two weeks or once a month, whatever it is, just make sure you're consistent. Also, don't run out and buy a bunch of equipment. You don't need it. We film on our iPhones and we edit on an iPad. It's really not that complicated. Yep. <laughs> so you don't need fancy cameras or anything like that. InShot is the name. A couple of you asked, but InShot's the name of the app we used to edit. Yeah. So. It's $9 a month. Super cheap. Um, it's great. The one thing I would say if you're going to invest in something, invest in a good microphone. We use a Rode lav mic. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, sound quality is way more important than picture quality. Mm -hmm. in my opinion. Okay. Joe Workman has a question. He's one of our patrons going to be extending his kitchen Island counter, new quartz countertops to be installed. Going to extend by almost six feet to make it a table. Obviously I built the legs to support the far end, but I'm nervous about support in the middle. I was thinking of installing some C channel in the plywood base for strength. So this kitchen island is going to be more of a huge table made out with a quartz countertop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you have any better ideas? How long is this? It's almost six feet. Hmm. I don't know. I mean, if you got some really beefy C channel, it might help. C channel will still bend though. Mm -hmm. Six feet's not that long. As long as you have really good thick side supports, horizontal. Connecting those two legs, you can put a lot of weight on there. And you have a way to, I mean, once you attach the quartz to the legs, it's kind of going to triangulate all that weight onto the legs. I think you'd be okay. Are you going to have any like lower stretcher? That's the one thing that you got to like think about is let's say you have four legs, choo, choo, and you put the top on there and there's too much weight. If there's no lower stretcher that's keeping those legs from splaying out like this, that's when it's going to sag in the middle. So if you can have some sort of lower stretcher that connects those legs so they can't splay out, well, then you can put a crazy amount of weight on the top of that. And I think you're going to be fine. I don't think you would need the C-channel personally. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Dark CMF, one of our patrons, wants to know uh, what your top five bourbons are. Go. Top five Go. bourbons. Oh my gosh, that's super hard. Okay. Uh E.H. Taylor straight rye. Uh Old Fitzgerald 13 year specifically, I think is flipping amazing. Um, it's not a bourbon, but it's a whiskey, so I'm gonna throw it in there. Jameson 18 is 
just insanely good. I like that one a lot. Um, I mean, it's like drinking caramel. It's just so smooth and delicious. I'm going to put Old Granddad bottled and bond in there. Really? <laughs> I like Old Granddad. Wow. For the price and how cheap it is. I mean, talk about bourbons that you're going to drink on a regular basis. All the aforementioned ones are pretty spendy, so you got to put a cheap one in there. Old Granddad, Bottled and Bond would be number four. Number five, maybe like, oh, that's hard. Probably Weller 12. I really like weeded bourbons, if you can't tell. Anyways. You say weeded or weeded? Weeded. Okay. Not weeded. Different. Different kind of bourbon. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go. I like this. Uh, top five. If you were to invest in top five Festool tools, what would it be? Oh, Festool tools? Top five. Top track five. saw. Domino joiner. Get one of their dust extractors. They work great. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard because um, don't tell you. Festool this because they do sponsor us quite a bit. Um their drills, they're good, but for the price, I don't know if I would buy their mm -hmm. drills. Sander? Should I say that? Yeah. Oh, they're Sander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the ETS, EQ150, uh, the 5MM, I think is the one. Uh, that one's really great. Um, Last one. What would it be? I don't know. So Traxa. Mm -hmm. I like the Capex, the Miter Saw. I mean, yeah, that's that. the Miter Saw I have. I really like that. So maybe that one. Capex. Yeah, Capex. Okay. All right. There was another question on here. Speaking of Capex, this might be the answer for this question. But if you do not have a table saw, how would you cut dados? If you don't have a table saw, use a router. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not your trenching feature on your No, Capex. I would say it's probably more common to cut dados with a router than a... Tato, tato, tato saw, potato. <laughs> a potato saw. <laughs> um, yeah, I would get a router and I would just use that. Uh, a potato saw, yes, <laughs> perfect. Um, honestly, it. sometimes it's way easier to cut dados with a router because you can move the router around a lot easier. It's smaller. Like cutting a dado across, like in the middle of an eight-foot sheet of plywood on the table saw, can be. Almost impossible, if not really, really hard. But you can do it on a router really quick and easy. And it's really easy to adjust the depth on a router where it can get a little more finicky on a table saw. So, yeah. If you don't have a table saw, get a router. All right. Yugur Bielik. I don't know where they're from, but they have okay. a question about your favorite topic, standing. They go from 80, 120, 220, and 400. And up. With scratches all along. Mm. Any idea why? Well, it could be a lot of things. Um, it could be the quality of your sander. Some sanders, their orbit pattern just isn't good. Their scratch pattern. And it just leaves scratches. It could be... Wait, you said you go from 80 to 120 to... 80 to 120, 220, then 400. And, and 400 and up. up. Okay. Um, it could be they're pressing way too hard. I'd say the number one problem that most people have with sanding is they press way too hard with the sander. You shouldn't have to press at all with the sander. You should just have to make sure the sander stays flat. You shouldn't really be putting any downforce on the sander when you're sanding. You should let the sandpaper do all that for you. Um, so a quality of sandpaper could be another thing. I just recently switched to 3M's Cubitron. That's all I'm using now. I went out to 3M, I toured their factory, they showed how it was made. I got to like use a lot of different products out there. And I will say it is insanely sharp. And if you let the sandpaper do the work and you're not pressing too hard, it works fantastic. Another thing that people do a lot of times is they don't clean off the surface in between grits. So you sand with 80 grit, clean off your surface, get rid of all the dust and debris because 80 grit is going to leave a lot thicker sawdust behind than finer grits. So if you don't clean off your surface and then you put 120 down on top of there, in between that 120 sandpaper and the surface of your tabletop is all these 80 grit little sandpaper particles that you're just grinding back into the tabletop. So clean off the table, then do 120, clean off the table, then do 220. Um, clean in between grits. 
Also, check your sanding pad itself. If you have a really old sanding pad that's got a bunch of burrs and marks on it, those will translate through the sandpaper and those can leave swirls and scratches on your surface as well. Okay. And then finally, if none of that works, what I like to do is, and I just do this by practice most of the time anyways, is I will sand past my finished grit with the power sander. So let's say I want to go to 180 is normally what I sand to. I'll sand up to 220 on the power sander, and then I'll come back with 180, 180 and I'll go over the whole thing by hand. And the reason I do that is because I want to get rid of any scratches or orbit marks left by the sander. So I come back with 180 and I do it by hand. There's no scratch marks there because I'm doing it nice straight lines with the grain. And it's really easy to get rid of those because I'm sanding off of 220 and not off of 180, if that makes mm -hmm. any sense at all. Sorry, I just kind of blurted out a bunch of stuff there, but hopefully that helps. Yeah. Um, somebody asked where they can find a potato saw. I found one online. Oh, cool. Yeah, so you can find them. Yeah. You never know. I meant what I said, Amazon. okay? Yeah. Potato saw. That's yeah, it's a thing. Five. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, we had uh, somebody in here from Edin Edinburgh. Edinburgh? Edinburgh. Scotland? I think so. Ooh. Kata said, loves the tips and tricks videos. Oh, so, cool. Yes. Yeah. We always are trying to come up with good tips and tricks. I saw somebody sent me a message the other day, and they are a paramedic, and they were out in their shop, and they were trying to glue a bunch of pieces of wood together, and they ran out of clamps, and there was still a few spots in this like laminate it was like a big block of wood they were trying to make this big thing anyways they ran out of clamps in a few spots and they're like what do i do i'm out of clamps i gotta hook it together and then they're like i'm a paramedic i know how to make a tourniquet, tourniquet. so they put a tourniquet in That's a couple places a and then twisted it and clamped the thing together and i thought that's pretty smart yeah wow you ever made anything out of myrtle wood uh turtle Myrtle turtle wood? Uh, no, I have not. Yes. Um, hey guys, if I have met, I know we can't get to everybody's questions today, but if you have a really important one that we haven't answered, retype it in because the list, the the things getting real long over here. Yeah, it's hard to go back um, through all of them. <clears throat> and let me just say again, I know I don't want to sell this too much, but you guys that aren't on Patreon, what the heck are you doing? Go sign up on Patreon because. It's way more private and exclusive over there. We do this every Monday, and it's really easy to get your questions answered because there's not nearly as many people, and it's cool, and then we hang out, and we get to know each other more, and then you can win the competition, and I can come out to your house, and you get discounts on plans, and you get behind-the-scenes footage, and we just have this fun, cool thing over there, and it's... Let me share a little story with it's you. neat. Okay. From one of our patrons, Brian Jones. Brian, okay. This morning, logged on and said, this whole work thing is getting in the way of listening to the live stream. It's getting really old. So he quit. So that was two hours ago. And then uh, 37 minutes ago, he said, okay, I quit my job. Made it to listen. So some people are quitting their job to get on here. Wow, Brian. Actually, he just said he just knocked a bunch of stuff out. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, buddy, I appreciate <laughs> it, but think through this decision, man. It could affect the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> Elusive has a question over on Patreon. He says, I've seen some cool woodworking projects integrating LEDs. Do you ever integrate lighting into your projects or do electronics give you nightmares? I'm not the most electronically savvy person, although I did rewire that motor, <laughs> which really was just switching two leads around. It wasn't that complicated. Um, we've put lights in a few things. The yeah. uh whiskey coffee table had some LED lights, but they were just battery powered <laughs> push button tap lights. <laughs> we um, were gonna do we have we've had ideas to put lights in things and we always just, run out of time. Yeah, like the back of the airstream, the little storage compartment underneath, motion censored lights. Oh, uh, we could still do in. that. Yeah, we we're gonna yeah. do it for the whiskey cabinet. Um, no, we haven't used a lot of LEDs. No. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple questions on whiskey. So have you ever tried Wild Turkey 101? Yes. I have a bottle in this in the office right now. Okay. Have you tried Eagle Rare? Uh yeah. What do you think? Uh I like Eagle Rare. Here, you want to see something funny here? Hold on. Okay. Hold Some, on. Someone asked if I liked how I liked my nightstands. I love my nightstands. Uh 
completely blown away. That was legitimately like there was no um, the, the, theatricalness about it. Like I was completely in the mountains without cell service. Did not know that I had nightstands till I got back, which was awesome to come back with nightstands and the charger still works. Okay. I don't know why they did this. It was so random, but the people at Buffalo Trace sent me this. <laughs> um, it's this crazy uh -huh. bottle of Eagle Rare, case of Eagle Rare, and it's got a plate with my name on They're the bottom. Like case. Um, and it was all crazy. And you'd think that if you got something really cool from one of your favorite distilleries like this, that you would like cherish it and you'd save it and you'd never drink it. Um, I drank it though. Oh no. So the bottle's gone. But I just thought the box was really cool. I told my wife I wanted to stick in the house, and she said no. So could stick it in the office. Yeah, it won't fit on the shelf. Look how tall this thing is. Oh. And it's kind of crazy looking. Anyways, um, I just thought that was really random. Build a new office. Yeah. We I should, should probably buy another another bottle of Eagle Rare and stick it in there. So at least I can pretend yeah. it's the original. Um, speaking of the office, there are a few questions we can address it. The TV show, has Hollywood picked up the script or what's <laughs> happened with that? Guys, TV is stupid. <laughs> Can't tell you how ridiculous. I don't know how they get anything done. It's just crazy. Uh, we did the pilot. It went out there. People seem to like it. Um, they told me the network loved it. And then we didn't hear anything. It's been what? It's been over a year. Yeah. It, well over a year. Since we stopped filming. Oh, yeah. For sure. Um, I actually have a phone call tomorrow with the production company because they wanted to reach out and tell me some news. But I don't know if I even want to flip and do a TV show. It's ridiculous. It's so, I don't know, disorganized. It's a lot of time. And I do videos every week for you guys. Diva. What's the difference? Did you call me a diva? What? No, no. I'm just saying, no. TV's no, not what no. it used to be. It is not what it used to be. And I think the reason, maybe we should explain that it doesn't make sense, is because there is not to the normal, I don't know, person that doesn't have a YouTube channel, it might might make a lot more sense than a person that has a YouTube channel that's successful and yeah. put out videos every single what week. What Craig so is trying to say is the money's better on YouTube than it is in TV. <laughs> so it doesn't make any sense to do a TV show. It just really yeah. doesn't. So something would have to change there. I don't know. Yeah. Um, also, it's not... I love that we can come into the shop and on a Monday decide we're doing this this week and it's going to be awesome and get really excited about and build something. When you do a TV show, you lose all control of what you can and can't do. You have a committee and a group of people telling you what to do. And it's not that I'm not a people person. It's just that makes it really frustrating. And then you end up doing things you don't really want to do. And then it's on camera and you're like, that's not even me. Who is that person? And I don't know. It's weird. So Okay, back to woodworking. Esburn, does, uh, does a drum sander work across the grain? Um, it will work across the grain, sure. Uh, you'll probably have to sand afterwards again to get rid of the scratch. I mean, you'll see marks mm -hmm. from the drums. It depends on what grit you're using. If yeah. you're using like a really high grit, you can go across the grain. Okay. I know some people that run it both ways on purpose because they think it gets rid of any marks. So, but yeah, you can do it across the grain. Yeah. Bye, Sean. He's leaving. He's Bye, he's Sean. Sean. Go lay on that uh, miter station for a while yeah. if you miss me. Um, all right, let's just tackle a few more. Let's do it. I mean, yeah, we, we got, got time. time. We got people sure. on here. You guys are, you guys are after this. The only thing we have to do is go out in the pouring rain and press. Well, that's apples, why we're going to so. keep going because so we'll keep uh, going a little while. It's dumping buckets out there, mm. which oops, first that person says, I enjoy your videos more than the pilot. Anyways, thank you. Well, yeah. look at that. Um, will you ever do a high end chessboard? We did a very low end thrown together chessboard. You didn't like my chessboard. No, it huh? wasn't high end enough. Um, that's true. I mean, we built that in a couple hours. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. We'll yeah. see. Okay. Do you have any experiences from Dank? What a great name. I know somebody named Dank. Is that Dan Cameras out? Yeah. Maybe. Do you have any experience with rigid battery power tools? I got some older DeWalt tools and I'd like to upgrade to brushless. I've been intrigued by rigid. Any thoughts? Um, I don't have any rigid battery powered tools. No, I do have the rigid oscillating belt sander. 
which I really like. I think I'm on number four now. It gets used and abused. Um, Because I keep burning out the motors, but that's been over the course of eight years. So four and eight years. It's not the best motor ever, but um, the problem is I, I bought one and I built it into my workbench and then the motor burnt out. Well, unless I wanted to rebuild the whole workbench, I had to buy the exact same one. Yeah. So then I bought another one. Hope they don't stop making it. Then that one burnt out. Um, that's my only rigid tool, I think. Oh, no, I have a rigid 16-gauge uh, nail gun. That seems to work okay. I don't have any battery-powered rigid stuff, though. Greetings from Bulgaria. Hello. Wait. Oh, I could do a Bulgarian accent. Can you really? Yeah. Hello, mate. Flat out like a lizard drinking. Oh, my gosh. I'm from Bulgaria. Crikey. Was that good? Nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Woo. still waiting for you to do an Australian accent. I can't do that. I can do Bulgarian. <laughs> nice. Greetings from Holland. Man, we got a lot of international people on here today. Thank you guys for watching the channel all the way from... Uh, you know what you guys should do? Have, uh, you guys should go over to Patreon and sign up so you can enter our contest. Because me and Craig want to travel abroad again. So we need more patrons from more other international countries. Submissions. We want to come visit you. Yes. Um, <clears throat> do you ever catch other channels working on projects and just ask yourself, why? Why would you do that? Like the project that they're doing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I to be fair, I don't watch a ton of YouTube because I just don't have time. We're building projects every week. Um, I do see thumbnails and clips of other people and it's obvious to me and please let me know if you think I'm ever doing this because I don't want this to become our channel. It's obvious to me when some channels are building things just because they think it's going to be like the next viral video and I don't care about viral videos. I just want to build cool stuff that I actually like and I actually enjoy doing. So I'm not going to build some, I don't know. I don't want to say anything because I don't want to give away channels that I'm talking yeah, yeah, yeah. about. But good. if you know, you you know channels that just it's it's just it can't be fun. Are you really having fun building that stuff? I mean, it's just a view chase, and I don't want to do that. All right, I want to hear from you guys. What do you want? What us builds to build? would you guys like to see on the channel? They're probably like no more airstream, no more cabinets. I've seen so many cabinets. Mm, yeah. Greetings There's from Rwanda is on here this oh, morning. Oh, what's up, Rwanda? Yeah, Germany. I can do a Rwanda accent. Okay. Hey, everybody. I'm from Rwanda. Is that it? Rwanda, Alabama. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. No? Oh. No. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's answer Is that more. offensive for me to try and do accents? That can are, you not do that anymore? Can, well, it's. I feel like you can do it if you're not trying to do it like you're doing. I think what you're doing I is I am totally literally fine. trying to do it. Is that not okay? I don't know what's okay and not anymore. I'm surprised I have not been canceled yet because I don't know the rules to everything. So I'm sorry if I offended anybody. Um, my apologies. Okay. John Kuzak just turned green. I don't know what that means. What does that John mean? John Kuzak? Wait, is that a famous person? That sounds like a famous person. But they just did a thanks. They gave us $4.99. $4.99 for totally for thanks for John. I forgot Cusack. that you can do that. That's crazy. Isn't that a isn't that a famous person? I feel like Who, that is a famous person. There's an actor. Yeah. With a very similar name. Yeah. He sounds like this. No relation to the actor. Hello. So. No, I'm John, John, you missed your chance, man. Kuzak. You could have like totally played it off. Like oh uh, yeah. Craig is famous. Craig is famous. I'm not famous. He used to be in a band. Oh, I did used to be in a band. Uh, hop onto your local um, or your your streaming service and, and type in Root Down. All one word. Root Down. One word. That's my band. That used to be my band. It's like a pop rock reggae band. I'm the drummer. That was pretty Dude, good. I look, You're a really good air drummer. That, I looked like a drummer. Wow. wow. That's my calling. <laughs> okay. I don't think you should ever do that again. Whoa, Drew. Drew prob peanut ball, peanut balls. P pee balls. <laughs> <laughs> Drew P <pee> balls. <laughs> Gave us a dollar ninety-nine. <laughs> Walked well into played. that one. Well played. Nice, Drew. Oh, that's Thank funny. you. That was really funny. Um we want an F-150 tank build. Somebody, High from Denmark. That $45 for Eastburn. 
uh, a uh, F-150 tank build. Build a tank around your F-150. That's what he's saying. $45. He just... He just paid $45 to say that. What? Yeah. All the way from Denmark. Wow. Why do you have to? You don't have to pay to say no, things, do you? Why did you pay $45? So wow, you man. Thank it. you. Yeah. Um. Ooh, a tank build around. Oh, no, an F. F-150 tank build. Turn your F-150 into a tank. That would be pretty cool. That would be. The problem Legit. is when I built the first tank, I made a lot of trips to the lumber store. Yeah, I was gonna say, how would you? So I don't know how I would do that it if I was fit in my charger. Currently building the F one fifty in your tank, that would be pretty sweet. Though. That would be sweet. We do have sitting in the shop over here in the shed. Nothing's ever gonna happen to this. No, I've it lost will. all faith. No, we just need to revive it. We bought a nineteen seventy three Harley Davidson golf cart, a three wheeling, oh, and it. it says, DKK to USD 45 equals 639. We were so excited. We were like $45. Who would, who would pay $45? Yeah, we're rich. we're rich. We can go to lunch. Yes. Oh, I can. We can go to McDonald's now. Hey, the UPS um, manager. We have a Harley Davidson three wheeler. So here we go. What if I do a poll? Hey, here, let me say this. Is anybody out there, because I've already said I'm not great with motors. Is anybody out there local to Oregon and is really good with engines and motors and wants to help us get this Harley Davidson running? Because it needs to be running. What's up? How you doing? Good, man. How are you? All right. What you got? Screaming case of... Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, wait. I got one more out there. Oh. Two packages. All right. I was going to do a poll, but I'm not going to do a poll. Anyone out there, a mechanic. That wants to help us. Hey, what's said, that guy's name that I met on a, uh, last Sunday? Josh's uh, neighbor slash good friend. Is his name Wes? No. No. But I, what's that guy's name? I feel like we Reese. need to decide on do we restore this golf cart to like pristine, swanky, danky. You know the guy I'm talking about? What's no. his name? Or do we do something fun with his it? His wife like just got her motorcycle license. A Batmobile. Remember that guy? No. They're at that barbecue thing we were at on Sunday. No. He's a mechanic. That's all I'm saying. Oh, great. We should talk to him. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. Anyways. Stop fighting. Um, anyway, I think we got to decide what we want to do. If we want to restore or if we want to do something super fun. I want to turn it into the Batmobile. Golf cart Batmobile. Hell yeah. yeah says a Mark. legitimate like that we could go play golf in the Batmobile. I want that to do would be that. sweet. Oh, wow. you know what that is? It's our outboard motor. I ordered an outboard motor on Amazon. Uh, spoiler alert. Why, why yeah, we're building a boat, man. <laughs> kind of I will say our UPS guy puts up with a lot because he, he always does. brings really random stuff. So. You can see him on one of the videos. Which you want to say hi to the people? Hi. Uh, he doesn't, he doesn't want to come over. Yeah. He's in one of the videos when I made stool pants. He was here. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a six and a half horsepower outboard. Dude, we should do it's a Yami Zaka Zui, something like that. What kind of boat are you building? I can't say because we don't want to give it away. Oh, but yeah. it'll be pretty good. Sorry, guys. Hold, please. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, sorry. no, you're fine. Bye, Mike. See ya. All right. Well, you guys have a good one. Bye. Bye. Uh, John. John. He probably thought I was calling him Mike. I'm 90% Mike. sure his name's it's John. John. I it's always John. forget. It is John, right? Yes, it's John. Okay, dude, hear me out. F1 car. No, well, that's what I thought he was saying when he said build around your F-150. I thought it was like some F1 related. You think we should turn the golf cart into an F, a three-wheeled F1, three -wheeled F1 car? three-wheeled F1 car. No. Yeah. Well, it's just F1 cars don't have three wheels. But we could turn Ivor's go-kart into an, into an yeah, F1 car. Yeah, we need to turn something into an F1 yeah, car. Yeah, definitely. Um, build a wooden bathtub. Um, I've funny. seen wooden bathtubs, actually. That would be crazy. Uh, All right. We got time for yeah. like three or four three more questions. More, four more, yeah. And then we got to get some work done. Um, okay. What's your go-to brand of golf clubs? I have Mizuno irons and a Tyler's driver. Odyssey putter. You have pings, right? Um, I do have pings. So funny story about my pings. I ordered them two years ago. Um, they're the SI27s. I don't know what number they are. Anyways, 
they were the brand new ones out that year. I ordered them at the beginning of the year. This was actually, it was a few years ago because it was kind of during the pandemic. Everything was screwed up with shipping and all that stuff. It took so long for me to get those golf clubs that the day, I kid you not, the day I got those golf clubs, the next generation pings came out. How lame is that? Sounds like a whole saw stop debacle all over again. I know. I was yeah. pretty upset. Did you, did you just cover it and write Dick's title list? Sporting Goods Online. Yeah. How on. dare you? That's why you go get custom fitted for the clubs. And then you always ask the pro at the thing, hey, is there any new clubs coming out? Oh, I did a virtual custom fitting. It's this whole thing you can do. It's pretty sweet. It's probably terrible. That's probably why I'm not very good at golf. Okay. If somebody was to buy one miter saw, what would you say? Um, I don't know. It's hard because I only know what I know. I have the Festool Capex. I really like it. Um, there's some people out there who hate it. I don't know why. I because it's something with the grip it doesn't bother me at all. Um, before that, I had a really, really crappy secondhand Ryobi that was terrible. The fence was out of square, didn't cut straight. So I I only have those two to talk about. Um, I like the Capex. I've heard really good things about the Bosch uh, miter saw. Uh, it's kind of got this weird like scissor arm thing when it cuts. I've heard really good things about that. Um, actually, I do have a DeWalt job site miter saw that's gotten just, you know, the life beat out of it, being hauled in and out of trailers and trucks, and it still works great. As long as it cuts square, okay. whatever. All right, from Danielle Contreras. She's a patron. Oh, yeah. What Our screws girl. do you use for cabinet carcasses? Um, I am a huge fan of the GRK screws. You can get them at Home Depot. I think you can get them at Lowe's. The reason I like them is um, I don't like Phillips head screws. If you're using Phillips head screws for anything anymore, come on, man. Join 2023. Or like 2090, seriously. Two, I mean, 1990. 2090. 2090, <laughs> the future. <laughs> the GRK, uh, they're like the star head screws. They never strip. They're really easy to drive. They come in a zillion different. You can get like the pinhead ones. You can get the classic head ones. You can get pan head ones. You can get the cabinet head ones, which is like the really big pan head ones. Um, I like them. They seem to hold up really well. Mm hmm Okay, from That's Brandon Remy. Saw the recent switch from uh, the Festool sandpaper to the Cubitron 2. Have mm -hmm. you tried the Cubitron 2 extract net discs, the mesh ones? Yeah, I'm not the biggest <laughs> fan of the mesh, and let me tell you why. Um, they're fine if you're sanding a flat surface. They work great. But if you have to do the edge of anything or go around a corner, it always gets caught on something, and it gets a hole ripped in it and it destroys the net. And I just think it gets caught on things way too easy. So teach his own. I'm not a huge net fan. Okay. Um, is there anyone, for, this is from Brian Jones. Is there anyone you would like to work with that you haven't teamed up with yet? Mm, yeah. Barack Obama. I would like to build him. Uh, no, I don't know. I just, I don't know why he's, I said Barack he's, Obama. He's, he's always say Barack Obama. And I don't know why. It's because he's got next to um, um, Ariel oh, Grande. He's got the yeah, most so it's Twitter all about followers. Exposure. Well, yeah, I was just yeah. thought he's got a lot of people. So if I if I built something with Barack Obama, people would hear about it. It'd probably yeah. help the channel. Not a political statement. Just a truly. No. Okay. This is the actual. If I had to pick anybody to do something with. And this is for selfish reasons. It would be Dude Perfect. I don't know if you know that channel. Oh, yeah. And it's only because that is like my son's favorite thing in the world. And he would think his dad was so cool if he built some thing with Dude Perfect. Yeah, because he doesn't think it's cool. You're cool already. He doesn't think I'm as cool as Dude Perfect. He definitely <laughs> thinks they're way cooler. Ooh, hey, John, John Cusack. Cusack, the actor. Came in and said, Linus Tech Tips has a tech makeover, which is all sponsored, where they go and give $5,000 worth of tech to someone. Would you do that for a non-patron if you got a huge sponsor for it? Like we give you a bunch of tools? Yeah. Why not? Ah. We actually give away another thing that we're doing on Patreon that 
we did on this last uh, build winner thing is we gave away some sandpaper and tools. And me and Craig were like, that was fun. So the next time we're going to try and give away a lot more tools. So we're kind of doing that already. See, now Not he's now he's playing with us because he says, I am the actor. I lied earlier. <laughs> All right. So would you okay. like to sponsor ah, such a giveaway? Because you obviously yeah. have a lot of mm -hmm. money. You're throwing yes. it around with these comments, obviously. Email or DM. We'll do a build with you. We'll do a, we'll build. Do a build with John Cusack. We'll do a build with John Cusack. Why not? Why not? You heard it here today. We did one with Neil Patrick Harris, so why can't we do one with yeah. John Cusack? Let's do that. Yeah. All right, dudes two and ladies. Dudes and ladies. Yeah. Come on. Danielle's on and there at least. In between. Um, do you, speaking of NPH, do you have an Acquired any targets on here? updates Patron. on Neil Patrick Harris's woodworking career? No, me and Neil haven't talked for a month or so. Um... I know that he got into 3D printing. I don't know if that sidelined him a little bit, but um, obviously that guy's super busy, so I don't know how he has time to do anything. Yeah. Does Craig like sanding? To be honest, I don't mind it too much. It's kind of therapeutic. I put on like an audio book and just go to town. Really? Yeah. Nice. I you just always use, thought you, you were ignoring me. me but. more if you need to. Uh, would you visit Slovenia for a build? Heck yes, we would. Yeah, that'd be sweet. Yeah, let me do a Slovenian accent. Ready? Okay. Um, Hello, I'm from Slovenia, and we would like to come, and we like to be here with you, and make some very beautiful furniture. Uh, John has a long mustache. Oh, oh, yeah. Was that Slovenian? Yeah. Yeah. It was. You nailed, nailed, it. It. nailed it. it. On that note... Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry we could not get to everybody's questions, but we do this every quarter. Fantine's on here. Patron. Yes, he is. Uh, we'll open this back up in three months, but if you do want to be part of this on a weekly basis, head on over to Patreon. We would love to hang out with you, get to know you more over there, see you on a weekly basis. Anything else you need to add, say? What movie was that? Jurassic Park. No. <sighs> That was uh, Disney's Hercules. That was uh, actually Michael Bolton sang that song in there. Anyways, uh, got nothing else to say except huge thanks. You guys are so friggin' awesome. Yep. Um, David Vancheska. Vancheska, what'd he say? Learning a lot from you. Been enjoying your channel. Thanks. Oh, yeah, well, thanks for the support, buddy. Um, seriously, you guys are the best, and we couldn't be doing this without you. So thank you for the support. Uh, please keep it up. And if there's anything we can ever do to make your experience better, let us know. Absolutely. We couldn't do it without you. Got Sweet. Us. Check the links out for some deals and whatnot. Bye, everybody.